Stu here with Raid Shadow Legends. We're going to be doing a beginner's guide for 2020. Everything from early game to mid game. And then there from mid game, we'll do future videos, which will be very easy for you to transition into in game from. Main things we're going to touch on. You're starting champions when you start the game. We're going to talk about missions, quests, and challenges. Your lifesteal gear, your artifacts that you're going to need to make your champions progress, to make them stronger. Artifacts are everything in this game. You need to stay on top of your artifacts. The champions they give you, War Priest and Shaman, there are early champions that they give you in this game along with the starting champion that you will choose. Your skill tomes, Arena and Great Hall, taking your first champion to 60, doing masteries, getting getting strong enough to, to take a whole team into Dragons 13, which is there where you get four to six star artifacts, and then doing Clan Boss and Faction Wars where you can get amazing gifts like shards and skill tomes each day off of those so let's just jump right into it so out of the four starting champions who to choose from the cutscene in the very beginning is amazing i love watching it i love watching elahan shoot those arrows into the the goon or whoever it is the big one and then they go to fight the dragon and the dragon eats her it's hilarious every time i watch that i love it and gaelic is there he is a cool looking orc but out of those four you should always pick kale and this is not a joke if you started the game and you've only played a few days, you might want to consider making a new account and picking Kale. He is just that strong. The poisons that he does on his skill 1 and on his skill 3 are so great for game progression as you go throughout the game to beat bosses and to progress into dragons that he can actually take out almost on his own in late game, Dragons 20, Stage 20 of Dragons, and do a crazy amount of damage for you on Clan Boss, Nightmare Clan Boss, getting you all the way up there to the clan boss so it's really important that he's there plus all four of them can be your farmer which is the person that you'll take to 61st and then use that person to grind out all your other people to rank them up so being that they can all be your farmer but kale is the only one that can do everything i just talked about you really really want to pick kale he will help you with progression immensely now if you if you're already into the game a lot and you haven't gotten him he is a rare champion you can get him from mystery shard you can get him from ancient shard I really hope you pull him or somebody like him. So you can still progress. It just really, really helps to have those points. All right, so that's out of the way. So we're going to pick Kale to proceed forward in the missions, in your quests, and in your challenges. So if you look down here at the bottom, you'll see throughout your missions, you're going to want to stay on top of this. At the very end of all these missions, a long time from now, you're going to be able to get Arbiter. She is a tremendous carry. She can be used anywhere in the game. She's very, very good. And it's going to take you a long time to get to her because you're going to have to clear all the stages on auto, even up to 20, and then do a lot of damage on the clan boss. But that's okay. It's a lot of fun stuff to work toward, so make sure you stay on top of it. Always stay on top of your missions. There's a lot of good things on your missions to do. Always stay on top of your daily quests. You're going to do your daily quests. Once you do your daily quests, you're going to do. it's going to go into your weekly and into your monthly, where there you'll get a void shard each month and a sacred shard. So always stay on top of these. They give you really great rewards, easy stuff to do daily. You'll take care of those. Then you have your challenges. Make sure you do your challenges. Challenges aren't too difficult. They can be, but just make sure you read the fine, fine print on the challenges. Do those challenges. You're going to get a lot of skill tomes from those, ranging from rare at first to epic and then to legendary. So make sure you carry, make sure you stay on top of doing those as often as possible. It's kind of a flow to it, right? You jump into campaign. You do as much campaign as you can. Get those amazing rewards from campaign. As you're doing campaign and leveling up your champions, you're going to be doing missions as often as possible, your quests daily, and then you're going to be taking care of your challenges to make sure you knock out those challenges. And if you do it kind of together, it works out much better. If you try to skip forward and don't pay attention to those and then go back to them, it's kind of a pain because it's things that you've already went through and you really don't want to go back and do. So make sure you do it all together. And again, it gives you things to look forward to. It gives you direction in the game to where you're not just logging in, beating up a stage and moving forward you're getting cool gifts from looking at those quests those challenges those missions it gives you a drive it gives you something to work toward every day as you log in you know hey tomorrow i got to take care of this i got to get stronger and do this mission so i can get some new cool rewards a lot of fun make sure you stay on top of those so in the beginning of the game you're going to see that right when you start you get war priest for free now she is a rare healer now she doesn't scale very well in the game at end game so if you want to take her to 50 and use her you can but do not take her past 50 you're going to get a lot better champion. Same thing with Shaman. You're going to get Shaman at the seven-day login. And be mindful of all that lifesteal artifacts that they give you while you're getting before you get Shaman. Those seven days, you're going to get that lifesteal artifact. Those artifacts will drive you completely and progress you in the game. You want those artifacts. You want a four-piece 
lifesteal artifact on your farmer, which is probably going to be Kale. Unless you're pulling additional shards and you get lucky with something else, there are a lot of champion guides that I have out there. And I'm going to be doing new 2020 champion guides for all the best champions for you to use and for you to know about. So stay tuned for those. So you're going to have Kale or whoever you chose for your starting farmer, for your starting champion, and you're going to put the four set lifesteal gear on them. That's how you're going to progress through the game. And you're going to use lifesteal gear through everything. You're going to use lifesteal gear from beginning to end. You're going to use lifesteal gear on everybody you have in, in, in the clan boss, probably almost everybody you have in faction wars, and then all the way up to stage 20 and beyond in game, you're still going to use lifesteal gear. Now, you're not going to use only lifesteal gear, but for now, we're just going to focus on lifesteal gear. And how you want to gear your champions, I know everybody wants to see big numbers when they first start playing the game. They want to get crit. They want to get crit rate. But in this game, the best way to progress is to always make your champion tanky and fast. Very fast. That way, you can always go two times to the enemies one time. So you can outpace them. Not a problem. So being that it's that way, you always want speed boots. You probably want HP chest. And then you can get away on some champions with crit gloves in the beginning. But the best thing to do is to not always worry about that. But you can't. Kale has a great ability, ability on his A2 that helps out with crit. And then if you kill somebody, you get additional turn meter. And then again, he's got the poison. So the second thing we want to look for, besides being super fast and super tanky in this game, are champions that deal damage based off of defense. So when you look at champions, you're going to see some champions deal damage based off of attack. Some deal damage based off of how high of an HP they have. And some deal damage based off of their actual defense, which is very, very strong in this game. Because then you can have really high defense champions not taking a lot of damage but dishing out a lot of damage and getting life back from that lifesteal gear. So you will get Jizo at a 14 day login, but unfortunately he's single target, but he's still very good. He can get you through the campaign. He's a great, he's a lizard man. You'll see him. Great, great champion. But if you have Kale and if you have someone else, those do a little bit of AOE on a three turn cooldown. So you can get, a, you can get by with using an HP chest, speed boots, doing two turns and an enemy's one turn, getting that AOE back again, where you're going to do a lot of damage, heal back a lot, and go faster through the missions, right? Go th faster through campaign, use two people to go through there to three star it, get all those amazing rewards, and then you'll be just fine. And the thing about champions is you wanna save one copy of almost every champion you get. It's kinda hard to save, but really every void rare champion and above, you wanna save a copy of. Every epic champion that you pull, and especially every legendary champion that you pull, keep a copy of that champion. Do not feed them, do not eat them, do not give them to another champion just to rank them up. It's really not worth it. Make sure you hold on to them because you'll always be able to use them. You're going to need to use them, so hold on to them. Your skill tomes. Your skill tomes are very rare and very precious. Make sure you know exactly which champion you're going to use it on. Do some research. Find out. Look through my videos. Look through others' videos. There's a lot of good ones out there. Make sure you're using those skill tomes, especially epics and legendary skill tomes are very hard to come by. You might not have any for a very long time, so hold on to those and make sure you talk to people on Discord, talk to myself, send me a message. Make sure you're using them on somebody you're definitely, definitely going to use. Now, where can you get additional skill tomes? In the long run, you're going to be able to get them from the clan boss. Right now, you're going to get them from your missions, you're going to your challenges. So stay on top of that. But after you're done with all your missions and challenges, you're not going to have a lot of opportunities to get books. So what you're going to have to do is build up your clan boss team. And even then, it is random. The chest you get from the clan boss is random. And in the beginning, you're probably not going to get a lot of good rewards from the lower clan boss. You're going to get maybe some rare books, maybe some ancient shards. But as you progress stronger and get better in the clan boss, you will start to see sacred shards, legendary books from time to time. So it takes a little while, but you will get there. Don't worry about that. It's cool things that we work towards so we can progress in the game with. So let's talk about the arena. Everybody loves PvP. They love getting there, mixing it up for PvP. Even if you don't like PvP, you can set your weak arena team and still fight an arena every day and just blow through your arena tokens. Which mean, What I mean by weak team is like put in one weak person as your defense let your let your rating drop down. Then you just come in with whoever you've been leveling up, those four, and try to auto arena every day. Get your rewards. Go to your great hall. Let's talk about great hall. So when you when you do your arena, you're gonna get arena tokens that you're gonna spend in your great hall. Everything you should do in your great hall should be with accuracy. Kind of sounds weird, right? But you need accuracy for everything in this game to land any kind of debuffs, to land turn meter reduction, to extend debuffs, to do anything in this game except for artifact sets. 
you're going to need accuracy to go up against the resist. And in this game, you're going to need accuracy to progress. As you get up higher and higher and higher in this game, you're going to need more and more accuracy. So though you can get accuracy from an accuracy banner, but that's really far off from what we're doing here in the beginning. We need a six star, six star ascended, and then we have to farm spiders to get an accuracy banner. Very hard to do and not something you want to look toward doing anytime soon in the game. Even toward mid game, it is still very hard to get an accuracy banner for the champions that you're using. So what you want to do is make sure, and even when you do have an accuracy banner, you're still going to want to have really high accuracy here in the Great Hall so that you can progress through everything. Higher clan boss, higher dungeons. You have to land those debuffs on all those enemies you face. In Arena, you have to land the debuffs and everything else. So you're going to need accuracy. Always focus on accuracy. Everything into accuracy in the beginning, it doesn't hurt. You don't even have to touch anything else. You can do everything accuracy and you will be good. You will be good. It's a very good thing to do. Everybody does it. Please believe me, go accuracy as much as possible. So to proceed forward, once you have all this outlined, right, you're going to take your first 60. You're going to make them very strong so that you can bring up other champions to 60. And as you're doing that, you're going through the campaign. You're just going through the campaign as far as you can go. And in the campaign is where you're going to get the most experience to level up your champions. So don't try to level up your champions in dragons. Don't try to level them up in Minotaur or any of the keeps. You're going to go to those to do specific things. It's going to tell you in your missions and in your and in your quest. But don't sit there and try to level your champions there. You can, if you're obviously, if you're making it through there with not max champions, then you're getting energy. You're getting experience, which is good. Experience while doing something is fine. But if you're really going to grind out some levels on your champion and try to make more six stars, five stars, four stars, whatever you're making, make sure you do it in campaign. That is where you'll get the most experience. And you can still farm some armor in campaign. It's not There's nothing wrong with that. What we do normally is we farm all that campaign gear, right? All the artifacts in campaign. Do what we can do to make our champions stronger. Get that lifesteal gear. Get our champions fast. Get them sturdy. Then we go into dragons and try to progress up to dragons 13. If you get tired of doing campaign, nothing wrong with jumping over to dragons. Jump over to dragons. Get some gear in dragons. But try not to farm it too hard until you get to 13. But there's nothing wrong with going in there and grabbing some gear while you're leveling up. Because once you get that really good gear from Dragons, you're going to be able to do a lot of things in the game. Especially when we hit Dragons 13 and can farm that almost every day. We get that 4-6 to six star artifacts. It's going to be really good for you. So as you're doing it, really what you're probably going to need is a full group of 60s. You're probably going to need about 5 60s, 4 60s, a lot of 50s. And then as far as Masteries go, I don't really think it's good in the beginning to focus on a lot of Masteries. I really think... I think it's always best in Masteries just to get the Tier 1 and 2 Masteries. That way you're not in Minotaur's Labyrinth very long. You're only in there a little bit to get Deadly Precision, which gives you 5% additional crit, 10% additional critical damage from Keen Strike, or you could just go into Support and only get your additional accuracy of plus 10 from Pinpoint Accuracy, and then go down, this is in the Support Tree, to Exalt and Death, which basically gives you heals this champion by 10% of their max HP the first time an enemy is killed, in each round very very strong for all your champions to have this because it doesn't matter who killed that enemy each round which means each wave whenever you kill somebody you will get healed by 10 percent of your max hp it's it's really handy to have now after these two which doesn't take you very long to get at all i would not farm minotaur very much until you start making a few more 60s is it very strong for your person to have full masteries level 60 farmer with lifesteal gear on it is, and it's what you're going to work toward this whole entire game. You're going to want to come down here to War Master or to Giant Slayer, and once you have War Master and Giant Slayer on a champion along with Lifesteal Gear, whenever they hit for this crazy amount of additional damage based off of enemy max HP, and on bosses, this is a lot, they actually heal back for that amount too. This is the only thing that heals back this way. So when you hit for War Master, when you have Kale, and he's doing damage to the dragon, right? Putting up poisons. Any hit that he does, he has a chance to proc War Master because you have War Master, right? You have a 60% chance to proc it. When he does that, he's going to heal back with Lifesteal Gear a tremendous, tremendous amount. So it's very good to have. When you AoE and you have War Master, if you hit 10 different targets, you have a chance on each of those targets to proc War Master once. And if you proc War Master on multiple ones, you're still going to get healed back an absurd amount, which is going to cap you off. So it's always good to have this, yes. But should you focus on getting this right away because it's quite a grind. It is quite a grind. Not necessarily. You should focus on making your champions stronger, making more champions to 50, making more champions to 60. If you want to take one champion to 60 and just focus on this afterwards, you can. There's nothing wrong with that. But I would I'd rather spread it out. I'd rather get a whole group of stronger champions of 50s and 60s together first 
and then go conquer dragons 13 which i think you'll be able to do to do with decent artifacts again with artifacts that make you tanky get that hp chest get those speed boots get whatever gloves you want to get you can get more hp you get more more defense make sure you have speed substats make sure you have accuracy substats whatever you need if you notice that your debuffs aren't landing then obviously you need a little bit more accuracy but once you get past that dragons 13 hurdle you are in it for the long run to get to end game easily very very easily okay what else do we need to talk about so once we're doing that and this is the way this also getting life steal with war master and giant slayer is how you're going to do the majority of damage on your clan boss coming up your whole entire clan boss team is going to be full of everybody with life steal gear on with war master or giant slayer because that's how they're going to do their damage to the clan boss massive amount of damage with more with either one of these and then along with poisons or any other debuffs that you can get up Obviously, you want to get up a decreased defense. You want to get up a decreased attack. All that kind of stuff is explained in a different guide on going over the clan boss, which I have many of those. Just look those up, and I'll put new ones out for 2020. Don't worry about that. But don't forget, Lifesteal and Warmaster Giant Slayer are your bread and butter for most everything in this game coming up. It's great. You'll see it. It is fantastic to do, but I would not necessarily do it right away. I'd focus on getting more 50s, more 60s, Get to Dragons 13, conquer that, and then move forward. But it's really up to you. You can do that. It will help you beat Dragons 13 for sure. It's just a really long grind. It takes a lot of energy to do Minotaur, to get up high into Minotaur's Labyrinth, and to farm out all the way all your masters masteries on a level 60. Now be mindful too. You do need to be level 60 for this tier 6. It won't let you go. It won't let you select this even if you're maxed out on all your scrolls unless you are level 60. So be mindful about that. So that's really all I've got. That That is it. That's all you need to do for a starting account is just grind away. Go and have fun in the campaign. Get stronger in the campaign. Do the missions. The missions will actually tell you to go into ice columns. They're going to tell you to go into dragons, go into spiders. They're going to direct you to go into all these different dungeons to progress. So you don't have to worry about that while you're going through campaign to make all your guys stronger, to gear them up. You're gonna be you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be led to go into all those other places. So it's a lot of fun to do. Make sure you stay on top of that. Make sure you stay on top of your artifacts. Level your artifacts up as much as you can. It's gonna be hard. Silver is very scarce. So it takes time. Everything in this game takes time. It's a long grind. That's what it is all about. That's what makes it so fun. So as you have silver and as you can level up your artifacts, it will make your champions so much stronger. The faster you make them, the tankier you can make them. They will still do a good amount of damage and they won't be dead. So that is what it's all about. As far as everything else in the game, just have fun with it. If you have questions, talk to your friends, talk to your YouTubers, get on Discord, ask questions there. Stay active in the community. It makes the game a lot more fun. Once you get involved with a community like this, you want to play the game every day. You want to talk to them about where they're at with their progression, where you're at, what kind of questions you have. Join our Discord. The link is in the description below. And I hope to see you all there. And of course, if you have any questions, please post it in the comments below. Thank you so much all for your time. And I will see you all in a video soon.